All right, what's up, guys? Today I am doing um, a valve cover gasket replacement as well as the little gaskets that sit inside um, where the uh, spark plugs go. That's actually the portion that's leaking. One of them was leaking pretty bad, and when I opened up today, the other one is actually leaking too. So we're going to do the driver's side um, on a 2010 Legacy GT. I've already pulled the battery. I'll explain shortly how to do this job. It's very similar to um, other EJ25 um, valve cover gaskets. There's plenty of good videos um, on YouTube on how to do those. So this one is specific to this uh, 255. So this isn't, isn't going to be a full tutorial. What I'll do is I'm going to link the tutorial that I used to kind of figure out how to do this job and you guys can watch that one and then anything that's different for these motors um, I'll explain. Where are you? Huh? Oh, yeah. So I'm here at the Long Depot. You can follow him at uh, Bropsh on Instagram. And he also has a new YouTube channel that has yet to have a video. So I'm going to link his channel down below. You guys can start subscribing to his channel. So hopefully he'll get the clue that we want to watch his YouTube videos. All right. So pretty much what we got to do here, I have to remove this, the, uh, the oil spout thing there's a couple of bolts there's three six eight I believe that hold in the uh, the valve cover and then this little bolt here has to come undone these have to come off the alternator and pulled out because when you pull the valve cover out it won't be able to clear this cable um, you have to disconnect the battery and all right so this is what's kind of jamming me up that's a little different the old like pre-2010 legacies and pre-2015 WRXs is there used to only be one air hose here there's actually two now and one of them has a hose clamp I'm supposed to use special hose clamp pliers I couldn't find any I went to Harbor Freight and I went to AutoZone and they didn't have them you can I've taken them off before with like a screwdriver and regular pliers it's a little bit of a bitch and sometimes it can damage those clips so we'll see what happens those clips aren't too expensive and you're supposed to you're supposed to replace them so I have the instructions this is actually the manual that the uh, the dealership uses to service these cars so I'm gonna kind of use this a little bit and I'll try to put any screenshots of anything that's um, super important in this tutorial for you guys so you guys can see all the specs and everything alright guys so first difference I already encountered so on my old Forester I believe the old Subarus this uh, this connector to the this bolt to the alternator this is just a rubber um, like a, a flexible I don't know silicone part that you just kind of lift over this one is a hard plastic and what you have to do is when it's connected you just push in here and lift up so you push in on that tab and it releases all right guys next difference so I think in the older Subarus this just hangs loose but this one has a little plastic harness that this wire sits in. I tried to separate tried to separate the clip here using a screwdriver and I almost broke it. Um, and the same thing on that side, it just doesn't want to come out. So I separated this entire thing. This clip back here, you gotta jam a screwdriver. You gotta jam a screwdriver in here and lift. There's a tab on the inside and you just gotta do one of these and pry it open while you lift this up if that makes sense so back here there's these wires I don't think you're gonna be able to see them on the camera but back here there's these two wires that are plugged into the actual valve cover um, and you have to pull them out so I tried using a pry bar or a little pry tool um, I actually had better luck just using my hands the problem is the one that's lower um, I almost didn't have enough clearance with my hands to push it out so hopefully you have small hands. If not, you're going to have a hard time doing it. Um, so I have the instructions here. So right here, this is the valve cover. These are the spark plugs. And right here, those are the two clips, letter A, that are plugged in. So there's nothing. You don't have to unhook anything. You literally just have to pull it towards you or towards the, uh, the outside of the car. And they just pop off with enough force. Um, I was able to do it with just hand strength, but I have little girl hands, so it was pretty easy for me. If you have big, meaty hands, uh, you're going to have to figure something out. I don't know what to tell you. Alright guys, so that clip that I was talking about earlier, 
So Long says you just have to stick a screwdriver in here and pop it off and it bends the clip so you have to get a new one. So I don't have another one, this is just for air. And the other one doesn't have it so I think it'll hold at least for now until I can get another one from the dealership. Um, and to do it, just stick a screwdriver. Let's see, stick a screwdriver in there and just wiggle it back and forth until it forces its way into that like first notch. And then eventually it'll go in and then you just pry it off. All right, since it's kind of dark in there, Long is going to give us a tutorial here. This is left over from my AOS install, one of the factory parts. But this clip right here is the same exact clip that Victor's talking about. So put your screwdriver in here, and if you twist it, it breaks this little crimp right there. Well, the screwdriver is a little too small, but that's the idea. All right, so I disconnected those hoses. You literally just pull them up. If they're stubborn, get a little uh, screwdriver and push them up from, from the front. Don't try to squeeze up here and then try to pull it because it's like a Chinese finger trap. Um, and then the last bolt that's different is that that bolt right there. That has to be removed and then I think after that you just remove the eight bolts that are holding in the valve cover and it should come right out. Uh, and if it doesn't, I'll let you guys know what I forgot or what I missed. Alright guys, last thing I have to do before I start removing the valve cover is uh, remove the ignition coils. Um, so you can use um, extenders and bends um, on, a, on a wrench. But I actually found this tool at Harbor Freight, which actually has a bunch of bends already built into it and it's long. So you just like do one of these. Um, so anybody who's worked on a Subaru and done, um, what do you call it, <laughs> spark plugs, um, you'll understand why this is so cool. So Harbor Freight, 20 bucks, a little pricey for a tool from there, but uh, I think this is going to work out and be worth it. So I put the 12 mil socket on the end, um, and that'll just remove the, the coils. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to say was I wanted to show off my cool new little toy from Harbor Freight. All right, guys, so real quick, here's the diagram. So this is the valve. This is showing the side of the valve cover. So these are the ignition coils here. So yeah, there's just two little 12 mil bolts on each one. And you just use that little tool to undo those, and then when you pull it, just pull it in a twisting motion. It'll move very, very little because this is square, not circle, like some of the older NA um, Subarus. So, yeah, just work it. Um, take your time, and it should come right out. All right, so we got the coil packs out. Um, you just unscrew these. These bolts don't come all the way out, so once they're loose, you should be able to pull them out, just wiggle them. So long help me. The first one wasn't too bad. There is a little trick to pulling them out. You've got to wiggle them and then kind of like angle them and pull them out. So the back one long said he turned it. So you grab onto it once it's loose, pull it out, turn it 180, uh, turning it clockwise, and then pull it towards the back. So the shorter one goes to the back and the longer one goes to the front. And the way I know that is because this clip, uh, that's the clip I pulled out earlier that I was talking about and that was in the back. So this was, this, the short one is in the back, the long one is in the front, if I didn't say that earlier. All right, so I just came from under the car. I took the three um, bolts that are holding in the valve cover from underneath out. Came out pretty simple. Uh, I just loosened them with this 10 mil. Uh, it's a ratcheting one. If you don't have a ratcheting one, um, it's only two or three turns, and then you, I hand loosened them, and they came right out no problem. Um, Southern California doesn't experience a lot of um, heavy weather. So pulling this car apart is pretty easy. Uh, I'm originally from Connecticut, so I would imagine anywhere in the country or in the world that has climate other than 75 degrees all year, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. So just a little PB blaster and some uh, elbow grease. Um, you should be able to get it out. Anybody in Canada, you're probably fucked. Um, but good luck to you guys. But for this one, it came right out. Um, I didn't have any clearance issues. Brian's Mobile One said that that back corner, um, sometimes there's not enough clearance to pull the bolt out. I had no problems here in the Legacy GT. The two back bolts are long, and the front one was short. I think in the previous models, I believe these bolts are all the same length. So just make a note of how big your bolts are when you remove them and where you got them from. All right, guys, I don't want to jinx myself here, but it's been going actually okay. I haven't had any major hiccups. Just so, I know, right? Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm going to encounter all the problems, but I'll show you guys the problems. So, pulling all these bolts out, the only one that was a little bit of trouble was the middle back one. 
Um, just because there's very little clearance back there. Luckily, Long had this socket, um, which has a very short clearance, because this one, this is mine, and it was just too long um, to, to take it out. And then I went in there once it was broken with the spanner and was able to get it loose. And then I just stuck my hand back there and it took a little while, but I was able to, again, just by hand, um, loosen it all the way and pull it all the way out. So I've taken the last one, the top middle bolt, I've taken it out and inserted it back in and just twisted it back a little bit so that it holds because that's how Brian's mobile removes his. So I'm going to film myself removing it and hopefully it comes out in one shot. So we'll see. All right, so I put a little paper towel in here where the, uh, where the oil thing goes. So I've blocked it off here and on top so no shit falls in it. So what, he, what Brian did was he sticks his thumb in this hole here. Where the uh, where, where the oil uh, where, where you fill the oil, and then he pulls it out, and that last bolt on top is supposed to stop it from coming all the way out. Also, oil leaks from the uh, from the cover when you pull it. So I put a pan underneath just to catch any of the dripping oil. I also have a tarp under there, so I'm just gonna adjust the pan real quick. All right, now the moment of truth to see if uh, I can pull this thing out. I think you have to apply a little bit of force because the gasketing is, there we go, popped right off. So now, take the last bolt. So this last bolt prevented me from pulling it all the way out and slamming into the wall. Um, you may be tempted to get a screwdriver and try to pry it out. I would avoid that at all costs because you're going to damage the, um, the mating surface. So try to just use some force. Stick your thumb in the in the hole here. <laughs> Give it a little shocker, and uh, I don't know. I was able to get it off. So, all right. Let's see if I can pull it all the way out. If I disconnected everything properly, this should come right out, no problem. on something. I don't know what. Okay. So this didn't, I think in Brian's bubble, his comes right up. This one, I turned it and pulled it up and it cleared. So all the gasketing is gone. So it's actually in there. So I'm going to have to pull it out and make sure when you take it out, you take it all out because if you leave any behind, it's going to leave a bad mating surface and you'll have leaks. All right guys, taking a little beer break here. Um, shout out to our unofficial sponsor, Swampy's Pizza Port um, IPA. So I just wanted to mention one thing real quick. All right, so when I pulled out the, um, the valve cover, this gasket that goes around where the spark plug is, these are the ones that were leaking. Um, this stayed in the engine, and I just wanted to make a note that there's actually a little bit of a lip here. So where the lip is, the thin little part of the lip goes to the inside of the motor, and then the part that's longer this way um, points out towards the outside of the car, if that makes sense, away from the motor. One other note, so I'm cleaning out all the, um, cleaning out all the silicone, that's connected to the motor. Um, you kind of use this to reinforce the gasketing and I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit, but um, make sure you get all of this out. And this is a gray color, so apparently there's two different kinds. There's the gray and then there's the black. Um, one is more heat resistant and I think one is more resistant to oil corrosion from what I understand. It see, like from what I've seen in red before I did this um, job today, the black is what most people are using and recommending. Yeah. All right, Liz says use black. Liz is actually probably the most experienced mechanic here. Um, she's definitely pulled her motor more than anybody here. So Liz is saying use the black. Um, the internet says uh, use the black. So internet facts are never wrong. So I cleaned up the uh, valve cover. Uh, I had it covered up. Uh, there was a little bit of wind, and you don't want any, any debris blowing in here. Uh, so I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol. I was I used one of these little scrapers. Um, to just scrape off all the liquid gasketing. Um, I also plugged this back up again with tissue paper, uh, paper towel, because it was there's oil that sits behind here and it was going everywhere. And it's very very important 
that this is completely oil free or the new gasket won't sit and it'll pop out. Uh, I also washed my hands and tried to get them as oil free as possible. Um, so I believe this is the correct side. Um, I have both sides, so I'm not sure which one is which. So you just have to lay it in. Uh, um, so I cleaned this with rubbing alcohol. Uh, brake cleaner works really well, but we didn't have any. Also, as you're peeling off the old gasketing, uh, it's a good idea to make sure that none of the old gasketing falls in here. And if it does, you want to make sure you get it out of there. And you want to clean out as much of the oil as possible again. Just push this gasket in. And it looks like I did a good job of cleaning it because it's not popping back out. Sometimes if these gaskets have been sitting in a box, it'll take the shape of the box and you have to really fight against it. But this is, my gasket has been sitting out flat for a while. I've had this gasket for a long time. Um, and just to, for that exact reason, I kind of let it sit flat in where I was storing it. So yeah, it looks like it's sitting nice. And then you just have these, these little guys. So in the older Subarus, there's one more piece of gasketing that uh, comes in the kit. It's the little rubber grommets for those screws that hold in the uh, valve cover. This, so I was asking the dealership, you know, if I could get them, and he said this vehicle does not need them. And sure enough, there weren't any on this vehicle. So um, if you're wondering where that is, you don't need it. So as I said before, the fat side sits away, or I should say, the thicker side of the line will drop into into the uh, the valve cover. Um, at least that's how it was when I opened it up, and I believe that. This, this side hasn't been opened um, since this was assembled at the factory. But I'm not the first owner of this vehicle, so I don't know that that's 100% the truth, but this thing is nice and ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna do one more inspection of the mating surface on the inside of the uh, car on the engine, and just make sure it's clean and free of all gasketing. And once I've done that, I'm going to apply the liquid gasket, the liquid seal. Um, here I'll, and, I'll, and I'll blow this up on the screen but um, this diagram it shows where I'm supposed to put the liquid gasketing so that's where I'm going to apply it um, it looks like in the bottom diagram there's two diagrams here the bottom one is the one for the side that I'm working on and you can tell from the bottom there's another diagram on the bottom that shows the uh, the oil pour spot um. <laughs> all right guys so um, I just checked Inside, everything looks clean as possible. Um, I was, so Brian's mobile, he applied the gasketing to the valve cover itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to the inside of the motor um, where it's supposed to go. And the reason I'm doing that, when I drop the cover in, you have to put it at an angle and then twist it. And I don't want the gasketing to rub off. Um, so I think it's safer to apply it to the part that's still in the car uh, to the yeah to the part that's still inside so uh, I'm not really gonna film that um, if you want to know how to apply this type of gasketing uh, watch Brian's mobile again this is just kind of a, this video is just more of an addition to what he said and it's more specific to this vehicle all right all right guys it's been a, a week since I did my valve covers um, I had to end the vlog actually last weekend because I snapped one of the bolts that holds in the um, the valve cover and it's like one of the ones in the back middle that's very difficult to access and the torque on those bolts is 4.7 foot-pounds and I knew that going into this it's extremely common to snap those bolts um, and it was like the one thing the whole project I was trying to avoid and I really didn't think it was gonna happen. I tightened all the other bolts, I went around, did it in the correct order. Um, and I know the hand tightness of about five foot pounds. Um, and all the other ones, as I turned them, they stopped. And this last bolt kept turning and turning. And I, I felt like, no, nah, maybe something wasn't right, but I was trying to hurry up, get it done. Um, and just without any warning, it just, I just heard this click. And then it just kept turning and turning and turning. I was like, it snapped. So I was, I, I didn't know what to do. We, 
we ran the car. We I sealed it all up. It was already pretty much done, so I sealed it up just to see how much it was going to leak. There's no leaking. It's been a week now, still no le leaking. Knock on wood. So I'm just going to leave it as is, and eventually I may have to remove the heads. That's I I, sh I need to remove the head on the side that it snapped off on, in order to try to attempt to remove the stuck bolt. So, you know, that either that or remove the head and replace the head are my two options. And since both of those are very expensive and very time consuming, I'm just going to run it and see how long. I mean, my, my fingers crossed, it'll just not ever leak. I think that's a little um, too hopeful, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to run it as is. I'll update you guys on what happens. But yeah, just be extremely, extremely careful um, when doing that job. Um, I think I may have misthreaded the uh, the bolt, so I should have backed it out and then rethread and then reinserted it, uh, and that may have helped me avoid the problem. Um, you know, I know there are people who are going to say I should have used a torque wrench. Unfortunately, in that spot, uh, it would have been very difficult to get a torque wrench in there. I, ha I barely had clearance for a ratcheting wrench, like a spanner, so. Um, I don't know that I would have even been able to have a torque wrench back there, so, um, yeah, that's just my advice, is just go slow, be careful. Um, my other bit of advice would be to actually buy new bolts. The bolts that are back there are very thin and cheap, and the, uh, the my bolts had a lot of corrosion on them, so, yeah, I recommend actually trying to go to the dealership when you do this job and just buy new bolts, especially... I mean, if you're doing this job, your car probably has about 100,000 miles on it. So, um, yeah, just buy a whole new bolt set um, for the uh, the valve cover gasket. All right, I'm going to end it there, um, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, peace.